I'm Jesse Litch, and you're watching Class Act Sports. I'm Jared Ginsberg here with Class Act Sports, and we're joined by Major League Baseball pitcher of the Toronto Blue Jays, Jesse Litch. Thank you for joining us, Jesse. No problem. Uh, Jesse was drafted in the 24th round of 2004, uh, and he debuted in 2007, uh, setting a record going 8.2 innings for the Toronto Blue Jays and uh, recording his first victory. Jesse, what was that like for you, stepping right in? Uh, I mean, it was definitely a memorable experience. You know, it's your first start, your debut. Um, it just so happened to be my dad's birthday. So, you know, it was definitely one of those, you know, dream dream openings. You know, it was, a, it was what you dreamed for, is what you wanted in your, you know, as your debut. You know, I would have loved to finish the game, but, you know, they, they wouldn't let me do that. So it was, it was go out there and, you know, with the same mindset, the first batter of the game scored. So, I mean, that was the one run right there. And, you know, the second batter was the, the, one of the only three hits. So it was a matter of, you know, just go out there and, you know, grind it through. Now, you know, being drafted in the 24th round, uh, I know it's a little bit different than some of the other drafts. So what was that like for you waiting for your name to be called? Uh, I actually didn't even wait. Um, at that point, it was I had heard first 10 rounds and I didn't get drafted and I had planned on going back to college and they had a uh, thing called draft and follow in junior college. So if you go to junior college, you can still be you can you can go a whole year and sign the next year. You know, staying in the AL East, uh, you, you pitch against, you got the Red Sox, you pitch against the Rays, you pitch against the Yankees. I mean, the cream of the crop when it comes to batters. Uh, what's it like for you going against some of the best hitters in baseball, you know, many times a year? Uh, you know, you'd much rather pitch against the best. You know, you're out there, you want to be the best, so why not go out there and pitch against the best? You know, and they always say the AL East is the best. Um, but, you know, it's it's one of those things where, it, like I said, it's the same game. You know, they're up there for a reason. They're getting paid to beat you, and we're getting paid to beat them. You know, it's just a matter of going out there and doing your job and, and, and hope for the best. You know, I'm not sure if too many people know this, but Jesse was formerly a bat boy when, Tampa, when the Tampa Bay were the Devil Rays. Um, you know, talk about what that experience was like for you, uh, as well as, you know, if you always knew you'd make it to the majors. Uh, you know, uh, it, me and me and... Aubrey Huff always have a you know a little go back and forth. He he tries to send over his cleats every now and again to get them cleaned by me. You know it's just a matter of going. Uh, you know, it, it was definitely a life experience. You know that kind of helped me get situated. With, you know I always dreamed as a kid to be a major league baseball player, but you know it, it, in actuality you never know if it's going to happen. You know there's a little percentage that actually makes it to the major leagues, and you know that kind of helped me out. You know I had you know, big league tutors, you know, the whole time, you know, anytime I needed something, a lesson or something, you know, I could just go to big leaguers, you know, that's always a helpful, you know, it's always helpful. Now, uh, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned Aubrey Huff, uh, the uh, Giants just won the World Series, he was a great, great pickup for them, uh, did you ever, you know, you were, were you texting with him uh, back and forth uh, throughout the postseason or? Uh, no, I actually, uh, I, I, Try not, you know. I don't like bothering people during the season. You know, I send him a text after the season. You know, you know, congrats and everything. He just signed a two-year deal with him again, which is great for him. You know, it's great for his family. Um, but it, I actually pitched against San Francisco this year and went seven shutout against them, and he went over three against me. So he was, he wasn't that happy after that. And he sent it. That's one of those times when he sent him shoes over to get shined. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's he's he's a great guy, and you know everyone that I've dealt with and I've seen coming back, you know they've always been very you know congratulative, and it's just a matter of you know they know I'm out there doing a job, and I worked hard to get there. You know, it's San Francisco, not a, a big payroll team, but uh, they made some real great pickups. Uh, they they had pitching always, they had good defense. Uh, they you know they got Cody Ross and Pat Burrell, big additions throughout the season. What was the magic for San Francisco this year, and how can you and the Tampa and the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, you know, work toward almost emulating that success? Uh, I mean, their main thing—they they made some really good pickups, like you said. They've, they they have great pitching, and they picked up some veteran guys that that kind of made that clubhouse one in a, in a sense of not just a bunch of little groups, and you know, the the making it just one and playing together as a family. You know, that's. That's a key component, you know. We're, we're, I mean, we're pretty good in our clubhouse too, you know. But, 
you know, we're in the AL East. It's it's I'm not saying that it's much harder, but it's it's a contending the whole year, you know. And you know, San Fran, they 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 played great. You know, they had chance of not even making the playoffs, and then they end up winning it. It's it's a matter of, you know, they they made the right pickups and they they started playing as a family, and it's a it's a big thing when it comes to team. And talk a little bit more about Jesse Litch uh, as a pitcher. Um, you know, who are some of the toughest batters that you faced? Uh, I mean, there's all, you know, there's, uh, every batter's hard to face. But, I mean, my, my hardest, I have a guy, Dustin Bedroya with the Red Sox. He's very, very hard to get out. You know, he's a little stocky, short guy, and he puts the bat on the ball all the time. It's a matter of trying to just get him out early because if not, he's going to keep fouling him, fouling him, raise your pitch count, and, it's a it's it's a tough out. He's a tough out. He's stocky and he he plays the game hard, you know. And that's that's what I like about him. I, you know, that's one thing he does is play the game hard. And it's it's a matter of just get him out early. And I mean, another guy that has like probably an 800 average off me is Melky Cabrera. Yeah, it's it's weird, but he he owns me for some reason. But you know, he's in the National League now, so we're good. Right, right. Um, now, uh, who, is, who is one of the most reputable hitters in the league uh, that you've actually had some, some real success against? <laughs> uh, probably had to go with my boy, Ryan Howard. Uh, he's, he's always badgering me after the game, you know. The other day, like, when we went down to Philly this year, I think everyone on his team got a hit off me but him. You know, I think in a sense when he gets up there, I think it's an extra motivation to get him out because if not, you know, we're going out to dinner after and I'm going to hear all about it. So, you know, for a change, I had to let him hear about it this year. And it's just, he, he's, always, he's always a tough out just because he is who he is and he can go all, the, all over the field. But, you know, he's, he don't like cutters in and he'll tell you he don't like cutters in. And I throw a lot of cutters in to him. So I, I, my second start of my... 07 season was actually in Philly and I gave up one of those home runs that was like a, a wall scraper and it wouldn't even have came close to the fence in Toronto. But you know, it's you got to adapt to your ballparks. It's a it's a different, you know, it's a difference in fields to, you know, to stadiums wherever you're going, you got to you got to be able to pitch to it. You know, Fenway's got the big wall in left field. Try to stay away from left field. When you give up a, a couple runs early, you know, how do you rebound from that as opposed to getting off to a hot start? Uh, I mean, you just got to go out there with the same, you know, you, you, that's over. You know, I, I always look at it as that happened in the past, you know, go out here and finish the game, you know, go out here and, and trust in your hitters and you not giving up any more runs. You mentioned that uh, your debut came on your dad's birthday. Uh, you know, what were some of the things or what's the biggest thing that you've learned from your family uh, that you've been able to apply to the game of baseball? Uh, I mean, work hard, you know, it's, it's a matter of you, you don't come easy. You got to work hard. And, you know, gr growing up, we always had to work hard for things we needed. And my dad always had to work his butt off to, you know, just to, you know, make ends meet. It's a matter of going out there and, and knowing where you come from and respecting yourself and going out there and doing your job. Now, um, you know, Jesse faced some adversity throughout his career. Um, you know, he's, he's gotten off to a, a real great start. And, uh, and then he had Tommy John surgery uh, and recently had surgery on his hip. But he signed the tender with the Toronto Blue Jays, and he's looking to get things going moving into the 2011 season. Uh, talk about some of the adversity that you face in your career and what goes through your mind when you're, when you're trying to rehab uh, th through injuries like that. Well, I mean, Tommy John's a big one, you know, that's your, that's your arm, that's your money maker. You know, that's where everything, you know, the, everything comes from. And, you know, when you, when you tear, tear up your, your arm, that's, you know, it could be career threatening, career ending. And, you know, Tommy John's nowadays is a, is a pretty normal routine and everything, but you don't know how you're going to come back. You know, we've had guys not even come back from it. It's a matter of you know, just it's it's vigorous. You got to go through the steps. It's a year process. You know, I actually came back a little early from it, but I mean, it's supposed to be 18 months until you're back to normal. And I think we might have just hit the 18 month mark to where like now. And I was already pitching last year, so it's a it's a big it's a big surgery. Um, the hip surgery was was minor. It was it was a labrum tear, and you know that's three to four months. You know, I'm pretty much back ready from that. Um, but, you know, that's, that's not up to me. That's up to doctors, obviously. But it's a matter of just going. You've got you to gotta stay mentally focused. You know, if you don't stay mentally focused, then you could, you could wander. And, you know, I wandered once, 
but I came back to reality and said, if I can't do this, then I'm not going to make it back up there. It's not going to come easy. You got to put put forth the effort. So, um, just uh, talking about when you filled in for Doc Holiday, Roy Holiday, one of the best pitchers in the game, in the NL Cy Young winner. Uh, no surprise there. What are, what's the biggest thing you learned from a, a pitcher like that? Uh, you know, before he signed with Philly, we actually worked out together. So I mean. I, I learn, you know, you just you watch him. He's a guy that he's he's silent, but he does everything the right way. You know, he's a guy you watch on and off the field. You see how he acts, and you know, you want to try and duplicate that in, in a sense of your own way. You don't want, you can't really be him, but you can be your own person at the same, you know, doing the same stuff. Um, he's just a guy, you know. He was quiet. If you needed something, he you could you could go up to him and ask him. But if you didn't go up and ask him, you probably weren't going to get an answer. You know, you had because he was shy. But he's he's a quiet guy. But you know his, his work ethic is you know like no other. It's it's amazing the stuff he does, and you know now that he you know in the postseason he probably don't even know what to do now. Now that he's made the postseason, he probably don't even know if he started working out yet. Usually it's the first day and first first Saturday or first Monday in November, and now I don't know what he's going to be doing. You know you throw a lot of a lot of cutters, sinkers, and fastball. I mean you've got a repertoire of many good pit, many pitches, and um, you're excelling in almost all of them. Um, talk about what it's going to be like for you to get back, to get your velocity back, coming back from Tommy John. Well, hopefully it's back. You know, at at this point, it, they say this is where you supposed to blossom again. You know, you, everything's supposed to be back to normal. So I'm hoping. You know, I'm hoping back. You know, I was pitching back this year. I, I was almost back to my velocity, but. You know, I wasn't as sharp as I was in the past with all my pitches. And, you know, one day it would be two pitches. The other day it would be, you know, all pitches. And then, you know, it's just a matter. Of, but now hopefully everything will come back together. And, you know, now it's just it's it's going out there. And, you know, you're there for a reason. You just got to go out there and, you know, work at it. And that's one of the things that I'm doing now is trying to work on, you know, getting back to that form. And, you know, it's been an ongoing process. But, you know, it, it'll come because, I mean, I'm out there working hard, so I know it'll come. Well, Jesse, we appreciate you stopping by, and uh, you know we're wrapping things up here. Uh, what's what's one thing that uh, fans might not know about Jesse? One thing they might not know about me. Wow. Um, I really would love to hit more. You know, that's one of the things I, that you don't know about me. I love to hit, and it's just a matter of in an American League, whenever the uh, Whenever the interleague play comes in play, that's that's a great time for me because I get to take batting practice. <laughs> All right, Jesse, thanks a lot for stopping by. Appreciate it. All right. I'm Jared Ginsberg, and you're watching Class Act Sports.